In this video, we're going to look at MATLAB Grader. MATLAB Grader is a platform we use for most workshops and tests. On the left, you can see all the current assignments. The Practice Problems section currently has four problems, but we add more problems every time we release a workshop, so check back periodically if you want extra practice. Let's dive into MATLAB Grader and look at the Linspace Practice problem. Here we have the prompt at the top. In this case, we want to recreate t and x using linspace instead of the colon operator. The script box is where you type in your code. The first two lines are grayed out, which means they're locked. We do this sometimes because we want everyone to have the same file header or something. Once you're done coding, you can press the Run Script button down here to run it. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see the two test cases. In MATLAB Grader, there are two types of tests pretests and hidden tests. Both of these are marked as pretests. In a pretest, you can actually see the code we use by clicking the arrow next to the test case. You'll also be able to see any outputs the test case produces. In a hidden test, you won't be able to see anything. We try to give you as many pretests as possible. It makes things more transparent and it helps you debug if you know what the code is checking. These particular pretests are lazily written, so this is actually a pretty bad example. Anyways, you have two options to submit your code on the right. The Run Pretest button only runs tests designated as a pretest. Since both of the test cases are pretests, it'll check them both. However, clicking the Run Pretest button doesn't actually submit your results to the gradebook. Hitting this button doesn't count as an official submission, which is really helpful if you only have, say, three chances at a problem. For workshops, we don't usually cap the number of submissions because we want them to be a learning experience, but we usually do on tests. To officially submit your results for grading, hit the blue Submit button. When you press it, it'll run every test, regardless of whether it's a pretest or not, and it'll save the results to the gradebook. Always make sure that you hit Submit instead of Run Pretest once you're thoroughly satisfied with your code. We've had problems in the past where people would only hit the Run Pretest and not Submit, and we couldn't do anything about it because we couldn't prove they actually submitted anything since the Run Pretest button doesn't formally submit your results. Alright, I want to show you an example of how you're supposed to set up and solve a typical workshop problem. So let's go to the minimum element problem. In this problem, we want to find the smallest element of a vector a without using the built-in min function. Like the last problem, you have the prompt up top, but now you have a function box instead of a script box because this specific problem is set up as a function. The first eight lines are grayed out, so you won't be able to edit them. This means everyone's first eight lines will be the same, which is really helpful for us on our end when we're looking at your code. It also ensures that everyone uses the same variable names. Everyone's output will be called min value, and everyone's input will be called a. Lines 2 through 8 provide comments explaining each variable and their dimensions, which helps you orient yourself with the code. If we scroll down, you see this code to call your function box. In this box, you can write code to test out your function, so you can do something like this. And if you hit the run function button at the bottom, you'll hopefully see some good results. I actually don't use this box at all because the test suite has pretty much everything you need. Speaking of which, this problem also has two tests, both of which are pretests, so you can actually see the code we use. The biggest reason why we like to give you as many pretests as possible is so you can copy and paste your code into your local MATLAB. I know it's incredibly tempting to just type everything in here, but I strongly urge you to do everything in MATLAB. We've actually had a few cases where MATLAB Grader crashed because too many people tried to submit their codes too close to the deadline. We've also had some weird cases where the internet suddenly crashed and people lost their codes. One of the biggest assets of this class is the ability to recycle code in your upper level classes. I've already had people email me saying they reused part of their code from this class in a 3000 level class. If you ever need to do this, and I'm willing to bet you will, you can find it much more easily if you have it saved on your computer instead of trying to dig around on MATLAB Grader. Okay, so let's actually solve this problem. First, you want to go into MATLAB and open up a new script, like I have here. The first thing we want to do is make a proper header. Okay. 
I like to have this clear CLC and close all at the top of all my scripts just for housekeeping purposes. Save your code to a proper working directory. Now we need to copy and paste all of the test cases. In test 1, we're explicitly showing you what A vector we use. This will be the same every time. Then we call the function you write and an additional function mymin underscore pcode. If we go back to MATLAB Grader and scroll up, we see that we need to download the mymin underscore pcode.p file from Canvas. The extension .p means that it's a protected code. Basically, every .p file contains the solution. P files are encrypted, so you can't actually see the code. It's a black box. If we go back to our MATLAB script, we can see that mymin underscore p code outputs the actual solution along with two exit flags that you don't need to worry about. What's important here is that we're giving you what the answer is, but not how to get the answer. We want you to be able to see what the answer is so you can better debug. Okay, so if we go back into Canvas, we can navigate to the workshops, and then the practice problems folder, and you can see the mymin underscore pcode.p file. Download it and put it in the same folder as your MATLAB script. I did this ahead of time, so my folder already contains the pcode. Okay, if we go back to the test case, we see that the next thing is this assert statement. The assert statement basically tells MATLAB Grader if your code is right or not. The pcode file compares your answer to the solution, then sets these two exit flags accordingly, which in turn is then used in the assert statement. If your code is right, assert evaluates to true and you pass the test. If your code is wrong, assert evaluates false and you fail the test. And finally, we have an additional line that we weren't actually supposed to copy and paste into MATLAB, so I'll just comment them out. Test 2 is set up in a pretty similar way. We're showing you what the A vector is, but this time it's randomized. This is pretty typical. Test 1 will usually have numbers that don't change every time, but test 2 will have some sort of RNG function. This means you'll get a different result every time you run test 2. We need to go back into MATLAB Grader and copy the function box. MATLAB requires all user-defined functions to be either in a separate file or at the end of the main file, so we put this after all of the test cases. Don't forget to make a new header first. And this is the format you should be using for all of your workshop problems. We have a housekeeping header with some clear statements, the two test cases, and then at the end, the function that we're going to write. For the first couple workshops, I'll provide some templates you can use for some of the problems. Since everything is now set up, let's go ahead and solve it. This happens to be one of many solutions to this problem. If we run the code, we see that all tests passed. Each test shows us our answer and the actual answer. Now let's just say we made a mistake in test two. I'm gonna hard code in an incorrect answer. Now we see that test two failed. I hope this setup facilitates better programming and easier debugging. You don't have to understand every line of code in the test suite, but hopefully this gave you a general overview of how it works. Barring my hard-coded wrong answer, we know everything works, so all we need to do is copy and paste our function back into the function box in MATLAB Grader. I'm going to run the pretests just to be safe. And sure enough, both tests passed. If we open up the box, we can see the output, and it's the exact same as we see in MATLAB. Now we can go ahead and submit our code to the gradebook. We see that both tests pass, but test one was worth 0%. 
Because test 1 usually contains a static answer, we typically don't give any points for that problem. But because test 2 has a random number generator, we'll give you points for that since your code is robust enough to handle any test case. Don't be alarmed if your test 1 was marked as correct, but you see a 0% for that problem, because this is the case for the majority of the workshops. And that's it! This is a general procedure for solving workshop problems. Please let me know if you have any questions. See you soon.